Thank you so much for having me. And it's super exciting to uh, to be able to show you the new uh, uh, Rossum Aurora in action. So uh, let's get started. Uh, so we are going to uh, simulate a customs uh, use case. I'm going to uh, first send uh, an email uh, to Rossum or to my colleague in the customs department as a shipment company representative. So I'm going to send an email uh, containing uh, documents uh, in a PDF. Uh, and uh, while uh, the documents are going to be sent, uh, I'm going to go through uh, the document that I've shared with my colleague. Uh, so over here, we can see a customs invoice. Uh, we see very complex line items with a lot of information uh, just listed one under the other. And uh, this first invoice is, uh, is about three pages long. And then we see a completely different document type uh, in the same uh, PDF, uh, which is a certificate of origin. And then afterwards, another commercial invoice, again, with some complex uh, different complex line items and um, more uh, certificates of origin and more commercial invoices. So uh, this is not a rare use case where uh, documents of different types are being mixed together. And actually, it's a simplified example, as usually those type of shipments are coming with a lot of different declarations, a lot of different certificates, and bill of lading, and a bunch of other shipment instructions. And it's not unique to logistics either. Uh, in finance, for example, you may have remittance advice with different attachments. You may have summary invoices with additional supporting information. So splitting and sorting is really important uh, in the beginning of the process before you start actually extracting information from it. All right. Now, uh, let me switch uh, to uh, a Rossum role, a Rossum uh, user uh, role. Uh, I can see here uh, that uh, I received documents uh, from a colleague, I can see the email in Rossum, and I can also see the document that was attached. I can see the original document over here, and I can see that it was split to six documents uh, in total. And of course, what I expect is that uh, not only that those documents are being split, but also redirected to the right flows uh, for commercial invoices and for certificates of origin. So. Over here, uh, we can look at our commercial invoices and we see a preview of the information that was extracted from each invoice. So here uh, we will deep dive into commercial invoices in a second, but I can see some information is already captured uh, from commercial invoices. What about certificates of origin? So if I go into my certificates of origin, I do not see a preview of, uh, of the information as uh, as opposed to commercial invoices, Ross Aurora was not pre-trained on this specific document type and doesn't uh, know how to uh, identify date of certification or an authorized signatory. What it means is that I, as a user, will have to start from scratch. And that means that I will start with the first uh, document and uh, it doesn't know where the information is, the information I want to extract. And in order to teach it, I'm going to select the information for each field. So I have document ID over here. I'll find the country of origin and the date of the certification. All good. Uh, the city and the authorized signatory. So every time I'm pointing into a specific area and telling the AI where this information is, this is the input the AI learns from. I do not need to do anything else in order to teach the AI how to recognize those fields. All right. So once I'm ready, I have all the information selected. Uh, I'm going to confirm the document. And this way, I'm sending this information to the AI to start training already from that one example uh, that, uh, that I have over here. So let me go back. And, uh, and now uh, we can see that not only the first document is filled in with information, but also the other two. From a single example, the other two documents are also filled in with the information that the model before, the AI before, did not know how to extract. So this is absolutely incredible. Now, this is not layout mapping. 
the layout of each document is completely different. Right, so it's not uh, that we taught it how to recognize this specific layout, but how to recognize information from certificates of origin from just one example. So let's take a look at the at the second document, and we can see that now once I open it, this is really from scratch. There is no trick here. Uh, the document ID is identified correctly. Uh, the country of origin is recognized correctly. Here, I really like this example because it's in the middle of a sentence, so it's really different from the way that it was uh, uh, done in the previous uh, one. And I have the date of uh, uh, certification, the city of certification, and the authorized signatory. Just amazing results. And I can see that uh, that really it managed to identify everything that I have uh, with just the importer address uh, requiring a little bit of uh, uh, adjustment to the, uh, to the pounding box. So this is something that uh, really is, uh, uh, is an incredible speed of learning from just one example. Now, I want to challenge it just a little bit more. I have another example, and I'm going to upload it now. And, uh, and we'll take a look at that example as well. So this is a certificate uh, of, uh, of origin uh, in Spanish, right? So again, a different layout, but also a completely different language. And um, I wonder how well Rosa Marora would be able to get information from this document, uh, given that I've only sent it one example in English. So let's get back to Rossum and see. So I have my uh, document extracted here, and let's take a look. The document in Spanish, and uh, now I can, I, I don't speak Spanish, so I hope someone in the audience would be able to uh, shout out and verify that it actually extracted the correct information, but I'll guess, right? So this is uh, ID of the document, I think that's correct. Country of origin, date of the certification. Now, the city of certification is over here, so this is one mistake. And uh, the signatory is correct. Uh, maybe just to doubt the, the name, that's good. And we have the exporter name, the exporter address, importer name, and importer address, all correct. So one error after training only on a single English document, we could transfer that information and the model knows how to extract information from the rest of the documents. This is absolute magic. So. Uh, unprecedented speed of learning uh, is what uh, Aurora can offer you. All right, so um, those are certificates of origin. Let's uh, get back to our commercial invoices. Uh, as, I, um, as I mentioned, uh, we do have a pre-trained AI for, uh, for invoices and uh, a lot of the information can be extracted out of the box right away from day one. Uh, with very high confidence scores. So we can also see uh, over here that the confidence scores for each field are populated here. So very high confidences are uh, available for you also in the user interface. You can control uh, what kind of confidence thresholds you would want to use for each field. So, so all of this information is already extracted really well, including the tables that are really unstructured. Commercial invoices usually contain a lot of information in line items on top of what is usually being populated in regular invoices, like tariff codes and countries of origin and POs and weights and other information. And it's not possible to really squeeze it all into a nice, neat table. So many times what you would see is that each line is actually about 10 lines with, uh, with information all over the place. Right? So what we want to, uh, to do is help users to uh, recognize the information when we can. But also what I would like to show you today is uh, how the user, how the user can, uh, can actually interact with uh, Rossum and get suggestions straight away using the same AI as I was showing in the learning uh, part of the demo. So I'm going to delete the, uh, the values in the table. And I'm going to start over. So imagine that I need to teach the AI how to recognize uh, those uh, really complex line items. And uh, in this case, I have only two pages, but it could be uh, also 50 pages of those type of line items that I need to recognize. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just start uh, from, uh, from the part number, and I'm going to just select where the part number is. 
and move forward uh, to uh, the HS code, which is the tariff code and the description. Of course, you can already see that Rosom Aurora provides immediate suggestions and it updates as I'm going through uh, the first line of the document. And uh, really uh, the, the magic here is in, uh, in the accuracy of uh, the suggestions for very, very complex uh, cases where uh, it's not about predicting where is the uh, boundaries of a table, uh, but being able to really take it as a, a AI, as a machine learning task, and predict the information uh, from um, uh, from the um, first line to the next lines afterwards. So with only one line annotated, I have the information picked up for all of the uh, for all of the lines afterwards as well. So we can see that both in the table and also in the um, page itself, we can see that all of the information was correctly picked up. Uh, then if I would have a lot of other uh, line items in, in the page, I can also uh, expect that it would work on not just a single page, but for all the pages in the commercial invoice, saving really an incredible amount of time. So from, uh, one hand, uh, the AI would learn how to recognize those uh, those fields in those line items. It can also learn how to skip different lines. If, for example, there is zero amount or uh, uh, credited uh, credited line items that you do not want to capture, the AI would learn how to recognize those as well and will ignore them in the future. But also, if the AI did not manage to recognize the information, Rossum works with you and allows you to really quickly teach it how to recognize this information as well. Now, let's get to uh, the last part uh, of, uh, of Rossum Aurora. So we looked at splitting and sorting. Uh, we saw how quickly the AI learns and also uh, how easy it is for a user to actually uh, work with uh, Rossum Aurora to teach it how to uh, capture both information in header fields and also in the line items. And then the last part is about communication. So uh, over here, we can see that there is an error next to our uh, country of origin. And it says that the country of origin on the invoice doesn't match the country of origin in the attached certificate, all right? Now, the country of origin is really uh, Spain and the certificate also really is Spain. So the only way for me to resolve this discrepancy is to talk to the colleague who sent me the uh, uh, send me the document, or to my supplier or uh, vendor that I'm working with. Um, now, instead of going out of Rossum, going back to my uh, email, uh, I'm going to uh, reject uh, the email uh, via uh, Rossum. So I'm going to use the Rossum uh, embedded functionality for email communication. Uh, it links to the email that I've sent before, right? So it's uh, it links to the same thread of documents that were sent to me, uh, and uh, and I can reply to that specific email. And you can see here that I have options for writing an email. So I'm going to uh, want to write maybe a little bit of a longer email, and uh, I'm going to ask Ross Marora to help me compose an email so that I don't have to think about it, less headache. And it's going to use the content of the uh, of the page of the uh, of the document that I have uh, that I'm rejecting, and tell me why actually I'm I'm rejecting it. So it tells me that uh, unfortunately I'm unable to process it because there is uh, this specific error on the document, and I'm asking it to uh, uh, to revise it and for uh, further processing. Uh, uh, to send it back. So the only thing uh, I would do is uh, uh, is review this and then I can reject and send. So this is something that can really help. Again, every minute counts. If we want uh, people to be able to process 1 million uh, documents a year, uh, as we envision, we need to save uh, every moment uh, that, uh, that can be saved with automation. 